Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Lost City of the Desert in 1944, a pilot with the Royal Air Force embarked upon a journey from Salalah in Oman to Muscat, but he lost his way. Instead of flying due east for two hours, he flew north and found himself in the middle of nowhere. He became lost in the seemingly endless Arabian desert, only by a miracle finding the Arabian Gulf and landing just before he ran out of fuel. When the pilot returned to civilization, he had an exciting story to tell. Not only did he nearly lose his life because he lost his bearings, but he also discovered something strange out in the desert. From his vantage high in the sky, he witnessed what looked like a small town in the middle of these shifting sands. He described fort-like structures, what could have been castles, and crumbling houses. Yet he didn't see any people there, suggesting the city was deserted. The pilot's story sparked an age of exploration into what's called the Empty Quarter. It became clear to explorers that a lost city was waiting to be found. Every eager adventurer with enough money to do so began hunting for it, but nobody ever found it. Eighty years later, we still haven't found it. No one knows if there is really a city out in the desert, if it was an elaborate hoax, or if the pilot hallucinated the whole thing. Number 9. Petra and the Sun God The ancient city of Petra in southern Jordan may have been built for the god of the sun. Petra was carved out of solid stone by the ancient Nabataeans 2,300 years ago. But not many people know the detailed history of the place. The truth is that almost nothing is known about the Nabataeans or their traditions. Professor Megan Perry from East Carolina University says nobody truly understands the significance of these structures in Petra. You'll be shocked to learn only 85% of the area has been excavated and almost no written records were ever found. The Nabataeans are a huge mystery. What archaeologists have guessed is that they controlled the spice trade moving through the region, but then were conquered by the Romans and sent into the desert to go extinct. Juan Antonio Belmonte from the Institute of Astrophysics of the Canary Islands has a theory. He believes one of Petra's most famous attractions, the monastery, was built in honor of a mysterious sun deity nobody knows about. He noted that the gate of the structure is perfectly illuminated by the setting sun. The sun shines straight through the gateway to create a dazzling effect, though only for a week before and after the winter solstice. The mysterious structure may have been a temple from which the Nabataeans worshipped an unknown sun god. Unfortunately, it's all just speculation right now. We don't know why these structures of Petra were built, if there are tombs hiding underground, or if the connection to the sun is just a coincidence. Number 8. The Serpent Mound Serpent Mound is one of the most controversial archaeological sites in the United States of America. From ground level, you wouldn't even know you were standing on a historical site. It's only from above that you see the obvious shape of a serpent winding through the hills. The mound was made by early Native Americans over 2,000 years ago, but there has been a hot debate in the US over which tribe built the structure and when exactly it happened. Not to mention, nobody's even sure what the purpose of the serpent-shaped mound was. The mound was excavated by Frederick Ward Putnam, who found artifacts and lost villages nearby that he said belonged to the Adena or Fort Ancient cultures. But then, in the 1990s, archaeologists dated Serpent Mound at only about 900 years old. Then, more recently, scientists dated charcoal pieces found in the soil, which yielded a much older date of around 400 BC or 2,400 years ago. If it really is this ancient, the mound was built by the Adena, but if it's only 900 years old, it was more likely built by the Fort Ancient Culture. But scientists can't agree. Surprise, surprise. Then there is the mystery of what Serpent Mound meant to the Native Americans who built it. Some experts in ancient history say it was based on the Plumed Serpent, a dragon-like figure from Mesoamerican cultures. The Plumed Serpent was worshipped by the Aztec and the Maya, and is even depicted in ancient Maya artwork. The Pyramid of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza was supposedly a center of cult worship for the Plumed Serpent. At the end of the day, it's still a huge mystery. 
The most likely explanation is that a group of people who worshipped the plumed serpent migrated all the way from Maya territory into Ohio. Then they made a tribute to the great dragon they idolized. And now for number seven. But first, it's shout out time. I want to say a big thank you to Jay Hilliard1 and Nightguy34 for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about mysterious ancient places. Number seven, hunter gatherers in England. Archaeologists from the University of Chester just discovered an ancient settlement used by primitive hunter gatherers in the Stone Age. The mysterious site was uncovered during excavations near Scarborough, England. The settlement once stood on the shore of an island in the center of an ancient lake, a lake that no longer exists. Over the last few thousand years, the lake dried up and was buried under thick deposits of peat. The good thing about peat is that it helps to preserve everything. Excavations revealed artifacts, leftover scraps of animals, and even weapons made from bone and antler. A closer inspection of the animal bones revealed the hunters preferred elk, red deer, and beavers. What's really interesting is that many of the weapons used to hunt these animals were buried in a ceremonial manner, suggesting the prehistoric people of England viewed the animals they hunted as sacred. Hunting and butchering was likely serious business. Dr. Amy Gray Jones says they even took the time to decorate their weapons and other objects, suggesting they weren't exactly on the edge of starvation. After all, they had time to do artwork. This fascinating settlement was occupied 10,500 years ago. It really has been an amazing discovery because it shows that hunter-gatherers weren't just barbarians chasing the next meal. They decorated their personal objects just like we do today. They participated in mysterious hunting rituals and spent long periods in settlements when they found a place they liked. Number 6. Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania, Olduvai Gorge contains the earliest evidence of our own ancestors. Anthropologists have found hundreds of fossilized bones here dating back over millions of years. It's thanks to this mysterious gorge that scientists are fairly certain humans, as we are today, evolved in Africa. The gorge can be found in the Great Rift Valley, not far from the Serengeti National Park. It formed naturally 30,000 years ago as the result of geological activity. Lewis and Mary Leakey are attributed with making the first major discoveries here in the 1930s. They found stone tools and fossils of a long extinct primate from 25 million years ago. In the 1950s, they found even more evidence of early life. Mary uncovered the fossil of a skull and some teeth from a hominin that had never been identified. Over the next weeks, she and Lewis uncovered 400 pieces of an almost complete skull belonging to a new hominin called Zinjanthropus boise. It wasn't a direct ancestor of us, but it was pretty close. It lived 1.75 million years ago. The most important discovery in the Old Duvai Gorge was of the Homo habilis, a direct ancestor of Homo sapiens that lived 2 million years ago. It's thanks to the new fossilized remains here that scientists were able to theorize that right in the center of Tanzania, human life first emerged. Number 5. The Pompeii Bakery the volcanic city of Pompeii in Italy is undoubtedly one of the greatest archaeological treasures we have. In the year 79, Mount Vesuvius erupted and blanketed the city of Pompeii and Herculaneum in hot ash. The result was that both cities were immaculately preserved, especially Pompeii. Archaeologists have a real Roman town preserved for them to study. It's been an incredible source of information about ordinary Roman life. Researchers have found the remains of slave quarters, marketplaces, expensive villas, and so much more. One of the most spectacular places discovered in Pompeii is an ancient bakery. The bakery is preserved so well that we can see how bread was made 2,000 years ago. The millstones are still standing each one with a square socket designed to fit a wooden beam. The wooden beam would then be connected to a mule by a harness, and the mules would walk in a circle to grind grain into flour. Then grain would be collected on lead sheets and slipped into the brick oven. The oven, which is still in Pompeii right now, could fit enough raw material to cook 80 loaves of bread. It's an amazing place because when you think of ancient Rome, you likely think about colosseums, 
aqueducts, legions, and other impressive things. Nobody ever considers the simplicity of the Roman bakery, supplying bread to the entire empire. Number 4. The Lost City of Tanea Archaeologists recently made some amazing discoveries in Greece. For centuries, nobody was really sure if the lost city of Tanea even existed. The city was mentioned in ancient Greek myths and old historical texts in connection with the legend of Oedipus. Oedipus was the mythical king of Thebes. According to legend, Oedipus took colonists from the city of Tanea and founded Syracuse on the island of Sicily. Records from the 2nd century AD show that the city was originally built by Trojan prisoners of war around 1100 BC. After the monumental defeat of Troy, a group of prisoners allegedly escaped and built their own city, which eventually became a Greek city. The existence of Tanea was finally confirmed in 1984, when villagers stumbled upon a sarcophagus. They were trying to dig a well, but instead found a coffin and human remains. Archaeologists soon got involved, and large-scale excavations in 2013 led to the uncovering of a massive city. Now, recent excavations have revealed even more structures and artifacts from the lost metropolis. Investigators found a large public building from the Roman age, a hidden cache of silver and copper coins, and Roman ceramics. They also found crumbling structures from the commercial center, what was once a bustling marketplace where all kinds of oddities could be purchased. Researchers also made some new discoveries in the cemetery. A Roman burial hidden in an underground chamber revealed a bronze coin from Athens from the 1st century BC and a lamp decorated with images of the god Ares. The burial contained the remains of a child in a grand tomb with a ceramic roof, though nobody has any idea who the kid was. Number 3. The Temple in the Western Desert the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities recently announced the surprising discovery of a Greco-Roman temple in the middle of the western desert. Found amidst the sand dunes and dusty pathways of the Egyptian Sahara, 200 miles from the Mediterranean Sea, scientists uncovered the temple. It's at the site of Al-Salam and was likely in use when the landscape looked very different than it does today. Archaeologists revealed parts of its foundation, the main entrance, and a massive outer wall protecting an inner courtyard. It looks like a crummy ruin now, but 2,000 years ago it must have been quite the sight to behold. The temple is extremely remote, located near the Siwa Oasis. That's where Alexander the Great traveled 2,300 years ago to visit an oracle. The oracle revealed that Alexander was born to be the divine king of Egypt. As of now, the exact details of the temple are still foggy. We don't know if this was the site of another oracle, if it was dedicated to a certain god, or who even built it. Researchers say it was likely built around Alexander's conquest of Egypt in 332 BC, when the Persian occupation ended. This was the beginning of the Greco-Roman period, when the Greeks and Romans dominated Egypt, but its ancient religions and traditions continued to thrive. Number 2. Eisenoi. The ancient city of Eisenoi was founded by the Phrygians in Anatolia, Turkey, sometime between 1200 and 700 BC. Then, during the Hellenistic period, the city was controlled by both the Pergamon and Bithynia kingdoms. But like most cities around the Mediterranean, it came under Roman control around 133 BC. The city had a grand theater, a massive stadium, and a megalithic temple dedicated to Zeus. It was an amazing place with ties to the Greeks, Romans, and Byzantines. But for some unknown reason, history buried the city many centuries ago. It wasn't uncovered again until travelers came across its ruins in 1824. In 1926, the German Archaeological Institute started excavating. There was a brief pause until the 1970s, then another pause until the 2020s. Archaeologists are now hard at work trying to uncover the secrets of Eisenoi. And now, probably thanks to better tools and new technology, they are doing a very good job of it. They recently unearthed a collection of stone heads and headless bodies depicting a wide variety of Greek gods and goddesses. Statues of Aphrodite, Dionysus, Eros, and even Hercules. One of the more bizarre discoveries they've made is a giant man carved from solid stone. He was a whopping 9.8 feet tall, a massive creation even by Roman standards. As of right now, nobody is really sure who the giant was supposed to depict. If he was supposed to be a real giant, or a depiction of a god. Number 1. The Graffiti at Saqqara 
Saqqara was used as a burial ground in ancient Egypt for thousands of years. It's the site of the Step Pyramid of Dozer, built 4,700 years before today. It's also the place where many important figures in Egyptian history were found entombed dozens of feet beneath the surface. But there is something else at Saqqara that most people don't know about. Not far from the famous pyramid is a small room with a layer of glass protecting a very old inscription. The inscription was left behind by a tourist who visited the pyramid 3,000 years ago. It's one of the oldest examples of graffiti in the world, scribbled on the wall around 1232 BC. The timeline here is pretty shocking if you think about it. The graffiti was left 1,500 years after the death of Dozer and the construction of his pyramid. To put that in perspective, 1,500 years is the time between now and the collapse of the Roman Empire. As for what the graffiti says, it's not as bad as you might think. The individual identifies themselves as a treasury scribe under the governing body of Pharaoh Ramses II. He simply wrote how much he admired the structures and the impressive pyramid still standing after so much time. Basically, he was saying, I was here. Thanks for watching. Which of these mysterious ancient places would you love to visit for yourself? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and come back soon and I'll see you next time. Bye!